we got everybody here and let me configure my screen real quick welcome to unlock your si analysis potential webinar today we're going to take a, a tour on how you can unlock your signal integrity analysis but before we do anything else let me introduce myself my name is tim and i recently got my doctorate from university of colorado and i study under the world-renowned SI expert, Dr. Eric Bogatin. And I've presented in many places, uh, mostly in DesignCon. I started my first DesignCon 2015, and now it's 2020, and it's 2021. Wow, it's crazy to think how fast time flies. That is me, and if you have any questions, Lucy, you have my contact information, and at the same time, yeah, feel free to reach out to me in the chat in the moment during the webinar. Now today what we're gonna talk about is first, we're gonna start with the layout on the top left and over here. We'll do some simulation today and look at the signal and checking analysis. But we all know, and I would say if you're using uh, Sierra circuits as a fabricator, you know that you know it's very important to fabricate your board. Otherwise you're just living in simulation world. And nothing is really real there. It looks great, but it only gets real when it's fabricated. The same thing we'll need to do to the fabricated board. That is to do measurements, which is a scope of measurements, and then you have another signal integrity analysis block. Now, if we combine the two together, in the middle is the robust signal integrity analysis workflow. Now, we need to unlock that. And how do we do that? To answer your question, there are three big things. The first thing is understand the root causes of the SI problems. Second is to have a realistic virtual prototype, which is what we'll cover here. And third is rely on a dependable manufacturer. And that will that that is Sierra Circuits. And how does this play together in a PCP design workflow? It's as such. We have early design phase and a PCP layout phase and a PCB fabrication in your in your design. Now there is a system block diagram in the early early design phase that leads to stack up and layout design. And finally, in the fabrication, you have manufacturing and assembly. Keysight is doing really well on some of these, while Sierra Circuit is doing really well on the other. Namely, Keysight is really great at helping you with early design, PCB layout, and measurements as well, and stack up and simulation. And Sierra Circuit is great at helping you fabricate your circuit and looking at the stack up. And in the middle, we see this three spot, the virtual prototype that you get to play with in early to mid design while you send, send them to your fabrication vendors. Here today, we're gonna to talk about a example virtual prototype. That is a Xilinx FPGA DCU-104. It's all in public domain. And in the later on, in the final, final slide, I'll have a resources that you can play with if, if you will have ADS. Now the question we're gonna answer today is, well, how does the signal look like at the retimer? In the slide here, we see in the middle, it's a CPU, the transmitter. If we want to send some signal to the HDMI, the high definition multimedia interface, you have to go to the retimer because of the length and other uh, technical aspects. So the, if this is in the real board. We have to take a look at in the layout uh, same thing I've drawn here on the transmitter and retimer just in a in this in the virtual world. Do a quick exploding view of of the trace. We have the trace on the bottom left here. Let me do some annotating. All right here. We'll see on I'm joining on the screen here on the left. This side, this is the CPU all the way we can get on over this block this will be your capacitors and we'll see later on in ads si for how we can include the capacitor models in your simulation and now you reach the retimer on this side so that's what we're going to look at and we'll answer the question well how good does the signal look and i'm going to clear all drawing very good 
Right. First, we need to do is to use loss loss metric to anticipate the loss. My advisor always tells me, Tim, you have to anticipate before you simulate or you push the measurement button. Otherwise, otherwise you're just a technician. You're not an engineer. An engineer knows what's going to come out before it comes out. So we know to calibrate our engineering intuition. So here I did a quick calculation on the length. I measured it's about three inches. And the loss metric, the loss metric we're going to use today is 0.1 to 0.2 per inch per gigahertz. 0.1 to 0.2 dB per inch per gigahertz. Now, if we do a quick calculation on what we're going to expect, we will see that if we do 0.1 right here, multiply by three inches, and on the right, I'm looking for 10 gigahertz, then this is going to be about 3 dB of loss. And then 0.2 is going to from point uh, from 3 dB to 6 dB. So we'll see clearly that on the right, I have annotated right here, 3 to 6 dB of loss, we're going to expect. The second thing we're going to do is find out the time delay. What would the, we'll do that by looking at another metric, which is the propagation speed, which is six inch per nanosecond. Now this one is easier. We'll have to do the length is three inches divided by six. That is about half a nanosecond, which is shown here on the right hand side. The delay is about half a nanosecond. Now the impedance is where I'm going to get the crowd involved. But before that, let me give you a little more a little more information, a little more clue. So if I take a look at the closer look of the HDMI traces here, the width is three mils and with spacing four mils. Now the stack up looks such, look as such, we have the height three mil on the top and the height number two at 2.9, so close to three at the bottom. 